You're so cute. This video is sponsored by BarkBox. How does such a big dog have such a little tongue? Angus, today's your four month birthday. I've got a present for you. It's your very first BarkBox. This month's theme is Bark Slope Street Fair. BarkBox delivers toys and treats to your front door so that you can always keep things really exciting for your dog. What is this? He's a frying squirrel instead of a flying squirrel. Get it? Fetch fries and ketchup. Nobody does it like BarkBox. That is dynamic. Look at the different expression on each french fry. I know the toys are fun, but we got some great treats in here too. You're always guaranteed great ingredients in BarkBox treats. Lamb and gyro recipe, or do you pronounce it gyro? Tell me in the comments below. These are big, just like you. By regularly getting new things like this, your dog is likely to be extra intrigued by them, and that really encourages a strong bond with your dog. BarkBox is gonna give all of you a free Bark Box. When you sign up for a six or 12 month subscription, just go to barkbox.com slash dog training. I'm gonna have that link in the description below. Angus, let's go to the park and do some real world training. Are you ready? Click thumbs up for Angus. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. If you're trying to train your dog, pick up a copy of my best selling book, Dog Training Revolution. If you want your dog to be featured on my Instagram page, post a photo or video on Instagram of your dog watching one of my YouTube videos and tag at Zach George and use hashtag dog training revolution so that I'll be sure to see it. I'll feature some of my favorites. You might remember Angus from a few videos ago. Well, that was a whole month ago when he was only three months old. Now Angus is four months old and he still has a lot to learn about the world. Today, I thought it would be valuable to show you where to start with one of the more challenging aspects of training a dog, getting them to listen to you outside. Angus is already doing a great job with things like sit and lie down and stay, at least the puppy versions of those things, in an indoor environment. So there's no better time than now to expose him to the real world and see what we can get him to do. It's common for a lot of people to be frustrated when their dogs don't listen to them outside as well as they do inside. So if you're going through that right now, understand you're not alone. For a dog, a new place can be completely overwhelming. Different sights and sounds and smells are very likely to make your dog behave much differently than they would inside. Adjust your expectations anytime you're training outside, especially with a new dog, and don't expect to pick up where you left off inside. And here's a tip for you. Anytime that you're going to initiate an outdoor training session like this, Give your dog ample time and opportunity to explore the environment and really adjust to it before you start asking them to do lots of different things. So Angus has had a little while to soak up the environment and kind of adjust to it. He looks very comfortable right now. But before I begin a training session, wherever I change a major variable like the environment, I like to test them to kind of see where they are in terms of being receptive to listen to me. Now I am using a really good treat today. I'm using tiny pieces of real meat and we're going to see if we can get him into an up. Very good, that's great. That indicates to me, all right, he's receptive enough to follow a treat. You may have also experienced that when your dog is really excited by a new situation, the last thing they care about is a treat, even if it's a good one. Let me see if I can get him to kind of follow me and walk back a couple of steps. There we go, so he's following the lure. Let's see if I can get him to sit. Perfect, hey, that's really good. Remember, he's only four months old, so it would be perfectly understandable if he was distracted. How about a look at me, good. And how about a lie down? Look at that. Nice job, buddy. So doing simple exercises like this that your dog already knows is a fantastic way to tell whether or not they're in a teachable mindset. If they were unresponsive to these basic skills that they demonstrated that they understand outside of this environment, then you would just simply take a step back and really prioritize training in a less distracting environment and work your way up. Over here. So right there, he's reacting to a dog. See that? So I'm gonna go ahead, bring him back over here, ask him to sit, get his attention. Good job. So that's a good example of redirecting your dog. But again, you know, he's very curious about the dog over there, but that doesn't mean he can just go up and respond and react to every dog he sees. We have to teach him some basic manners. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna use that treat. But see, there's a good example right there. Initially, he kind of was like, I don't know if I want that treat. I wanna look at that dog. So that was kind of an indicator that he was in and out. So we know that he's kind of sensitive if he gets really distracted by something, which you would expect. But he's used to dogs having four legs. That one had three legs. Maybe he noticed that was different. But the idea is over time, you desensitize your dog to giving them lots of exposure to dogs at 10 feet away, just like this, and showing them how you want them to behave. In this case, a sit and a look at me, and I appreciate that you're now behaving very well. Let's take a walk around the park, see if we can find some more enticing distractions and show Angus how we want him to behave around those distractions. Right now, you can see he's really paying attention to these birds. He's very intrigued by them. Hey, Angus, look at me. Angus. I'm calling his name, he's not paying attention to me. 
Angus, Angus, hey. Good boy. He gave me his attention there. I'm gonna give him a little treat. Let me make sure he's in that teachable mindset before we get closer. He's sitting for a treat. That indicates he's open-minded to listening. That's the purpose of doing that. This distance from the birds, he's pretty reliable. I mean, he's a little in and out, but let's see what happens when we get a little bit closer. Sit. Great. Still doing well. You have to be pretty methodical about approaching your distractions. You don't wanna just go up on something that's likely to totally throw your dog off and expect them to just be good. And so by simply just coming out to a park like this and giving your dog lots of exposure to different things, you're desensitizing them and, and things like this aren't such a special occasion. The last thing you wanna do is wait to encounter birds like this or any other distraction for the first time and just expect your dog to tune it out. There's like a thousand birds over there. What do you think? Are you gonna give me a sit if we go over there? You really have to walk the line here. You should let your dog smell around. I'm not just going, going to insist that he pay attention to me at this age, especially with all these distractions. But right there, he, you know, you can see there's clear tension on the leash. I would like to kind of teach him to pay attention to me. Sit, see that? Sit, no, sit. I'm not able to get him to sit for a treat right now. Again, because he's excited. So rather than getting mad and saying, sit, 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 what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little bit of distance, get a little bit farther away from the birds. So watch this. Come on, Angus, over here. Over, up. over here. Sit. And look at that. I just, so in other words, I mean, we're talking about eight feet right there. I just had to move eight feet back and now all of a sudden he's like, okay, I'll listen to you. So really knowing your working distance is very important. Let's try this again. So let's see, sit. Right there, he's not taking the treats. This is overwhelming. I mean, imagine imagine being in his position. I can also try to shrink my training bubble, get a little bit closer and see how that goes. Sit. And look, it was successful in that case. That was great. Good boy. Nice work, that was awesome. Always be sure to inject that sincere, authentic praise with your dog too. Don't fake it. Good job, buddy. That was wonderful. You're a very smart man. Come on. Yes, sit, good, look at me, good. All right, let's go back this way, come on. Angus, come. Okay, right there, he's, ground scents are a huge deal with dogs. It's very normal for dogs to be like, no, I don't wanna go, because I wanna smell what's on the ground. So rather than just pull him, we're gonna try to get his attention to make him think from the inside out and really go through the motions. Because over time, that's really gonna be a lot more effective than just pulling them away. That doesn't teach anything. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go. There we go, getting a little peppy. That can help. Good work, good boy. I'm gonna walk back and forth on this line here because see, this is familiar to him. He's been on this line several times in a row now. A little tension there. Let's go ahead and ask for his attention. Angus, look at me. That's what I'm talking about, there you go. Look at these birds. I'm gonna stop right about here. I'm gonna ask him to sit now, because we're a little bit closer. Sit, perfect. All right, let's see if we can get just a few feet closer. And sit. I'm having a, a hard time right now getting his attention on me. When you can't get your dog's attention on you like this, you have a couple of choices. You can just choose to let them adjust like we talked about, or you can try, put a treat right at their nose to see if that helps bridge some communication. Right there, I mean, I've gotta put it right at his nose to get his attention. Look at me. Good, yes, good job. I'm gonna go ahead and give him a jackpot reward here because he paid attention to me when it was particularly hard for him too, so I like that. Go out of your way to get your dog outside as often as you can. If you have a couple of days during the week, make it a priority to take your dog someplace new and do this type of training with them. Post a photo or video on Instagram of your dog watching one of my YouTube videos and tag at Zach George. Use hashtag dog training revolution so that I'll be sure to see it and I'll share some of my favorites. Click thumbs up for Angus. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Get your free BarkBox when you sign up for a six or 12 month subscription at BarkBox.com slash dog training. That link will be in the description below. You can get a copy of my book too for the complete dog training revolution experience. Angus, you did great today. Come on, let's go do some more training.